So everybody, thanks for joining us today. This is Mike Rooney from Lovelytics. If you've joined us before, really appreciate having you back. Uh, if this is your first time, really nice to meet you. Thanks for, for jumping on with us today. A um, little bit about us. We are a data analytics implementation partner, specifically an Alteryx partner. And we're just about four years old, headquartered in DC and Toronto. Uh, a little bit about where we work. So I would say we're pretty industry agnostic, but these are a couple of places where we found ourselves providing a lot of assistance in the last oh, year, year and a half. And as you start to think about other technologies that you're using, ancillary platforms alongside Alteryx as you're building out um, BI platforms internally, analytics tech stacks, uh, just some other places where we can be helpful. So keep those in mind for future reference. A little bit about me. Um, everyone's probably seen this before. Um, I will say just based on the last picture of us, there are some people who have longer hair, some people have shorter beards, some people that have less hair. And for me in particular, now I have a beard, so we're going in that direction. Um, I'm an Alteryx partner. I lead the business development side of the house. so. You know, I like to joke and say I, I'm soft skills at best. Amr likes to put on that I'm an avid golfer, but I will admit that I'm going through a pretty rough spell. But more importantly, today's agenda. So we had set this up as a tab or an Alteryx server webinar beyond scheduling. So we're going to start off with a brief overview on Alteryx server. Right? Let's just you know make sure everybody's up to speed. For some of you, it'll be very familiar. And then the good stuff starting with the web interface and then wrap up toward the end with server architecture. So we will have something for everyone today and hopefully learn something new. And certainly after today's webinar, let me know if you have any thoughts or feedback. Um, really would love to make sure that the, the agendas and the topics that we put out are geared toward you know, perspective and current customers, what they're interested in. All right, when we're talking about Alteryx server, we really are talking about everybody. So you know, there might be some of you on here who identify as an Alteryx designer user, right? You're a quarterback, you are making data really usable, right? Whether it's coming from relational database, local files, somewhere else, right? You're preparing, you're blending it, you're you know, using your minds and using designer to help make it all possible. And so what we really wanna to talk today about is like, how do we practically speaking expand that conversation, right? There are other people in my org who need to make data-driven decisions, will they necessarily be Alteryx designer users? In some cases, yes, in some cases, no. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that when specifically thinking about like analytic apps, when, you know, of course, thinking about how do we allow others in the organization to use the analytic workflows that we're building if they're not using Alteryx designer? And then how do we share that? How do we, of course, to think about some processes on the back end, right? When we start to make this available to a lot of people, how do we scale, right? And how do we do govern? I think sometimes when right, we talk about data governance, it is certainly um, in an organization you can give people heartburn, right? You've got self-service, but then you want governance. There is a way to balance both. Um, so we'll talk a bit about that as well. And just practically speaking, with all trick server, right? When we talk about why we're using it, right? We're trying to schedule a lot of workloads, right? And of course, we want to be able to make sure that those run quickly. We want to make sure that people are getting data assets to make data-driven decisions. And then of course, make sure we have that ironed out. We have processes in place. We have authentication in place. We're working with other database systems, um, right? That your org has set a governance model for. So we respect that. We want to work with it. So um, all things that Alteryx server will check the box on. And then, of course, like think a little bit more on that. We want to make sure that right, based on the right deployment, you have the right hardware for the right job um, internally. Right, You've got different segments of users. We want to make sure they have, one, the access to the right data. And of course, too, right? When we're solving a disparate data problem, we want to keep people singing off the same sheet of music. So things like centralized development and version control, and then thinking about right what needs to be available in terms of the governance model, the analytics that we're making available. How are we administering those, monitoring them, 
making sure that people are using them and able to access them as well as reducing any downtime. And I think here's something to mull on today. Um, we're calling this a global BI use case, but really like take a little moment of self-reflection and see, okay, do, you know, does this kind of fit my organizational need, right? We've got some amount of like data analysts, BI analysts, right, building workflows. Hey, maybe we're sending things that we're doing via email. We do it on an as needed basis. You know, jobs take a little while. And then we have downstream users who are consuming a lot of the resulting data. And then, you know, do I self-identify that way? Do you think that that's applicable to your, to your org? And right, I think we're, we're definitely leading the witness here. Uh, but like, is that desired state something where we want centralization, automation, accessibility? And when we talk about shorter analytic downtime, we're also thinking about quicker opportunity to get answers, not as much time standing in line, you know, waiting for, you know, that brilliant analyst to, to, to come and help and save the day. So keep that in mind today as we start talking through some of the Altrix uh, server platform capabilities. And especially too, we're gonna really be focusing, of course, scheduling workflows is great. What can we do beyond that to, to help the folks in the organization that we work in? With that, Amr, I'm gonna hand it over to you. I'm gonna stop sharing um, a little bit about Amr. He leads the Toronto user group. He's an Altrix addict. I won't steal all of his thunder, but uh, he's uh, an awesome colleague to work with. He's very passionate about, about Altrix and he's got a lot to say today. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And again, we will have questions at the end. So we got a lot of material. Today's session is being recorded. Thanks, Mike. Again, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, I'm Amarindra, and I lead our Altrix practices here at Lovelytics. I'm responsible for the enablement and adoption of Altrix within our clients. Um, I've been using Altrix for about six years now, I think. And as Mike mentioned, I lead the one of the I'm one of the leaders for the Toronto User Group, Altrix User Group. I'm also a certified partner. As you can see, I picked up the habit of holding certifications. And I'm also recognized as an Altrex innovator. So before we proceed with today's content, here is a quick evaluation of who might need an Altrex server in their organization. So let's say that um, if more than one user in an organization already uses Designer, then I want to preface that you know server is not a replacement for designer, but it's it complements Altrix designer. So with that said, if you need a web interface from which you can share Altrix apps, then you need the server. If you need a single machine or a cluster to process scheduled workflows for multiple users, then you need the server. And if you're running on a machine that isn't always on and you need to schedule workflows, have them run at regular intervals or when you're when during downtime, then you need the Altrix server. All right, so where does Altrix server really fit in your tech stack? So here is my one minute pitch. Altrix server is the fastest and the easiest way to deploy data intensive analytics across your enterprise with effective and secure collaboration across teams. The architecture makes it so that it can be deployed on premise or even in the cloud. What's more, with Altrix Server, you can share your insights with other departments and business decision makers, giving everyone in your organization the power and flexibility to run their apps, customize output, all while harnessing the power of analytics across the organization. So clearly, according to us, the enterprise adoption is where Altrix Server comes into play. So here is a brief visual of the server environment. And we begin with the designer from which we publish the workflows onto the Altrix server. And once we publish to the server, we see a handshake between happening between the gallery and the service layer. I will go into detail on both of these terms in upcoming slides. 
And finally, the information is being shared with the end users across the organization. I'll just pivot for a quick second and kind of show you how to publish your workflows or analytical applications to the Alteryx server. Uh, most of you on this call must be familiar with what you're seeing on the screen. This is the Alteryx designer. And this is one of the uh, starter kits, the uh, workflows from one of the starter kits. And if you have Alteryx installed in your organization, under file, when you go to save as, you should see something called as private gallery. As soon as you click on that, you are given a dialog box with a couple of options. It asks, it shows you what is the workflow name. You can obviously edit that. And this is going into my private studio. I'll also talk about what a private studio is. You have a couple of workflow options. You can manage your workflow assets, and then you can hit save. As soon as you hit save, it should be saved in your private studio on the Alteryx gallery. So before I move on to the demo, here are some quick features of Alteryx server. The server ships with a built-in scheduler and a service layer that lets you multi-thread your workflows in a scalable fashion so that you can run intensive processes simultaneously. In addition to automation and scheduling, the server supports load balancing and it also ships with a built-in auto recovery to make sure that your users have no downtime. With server, Altris can also share and collaborate on analytical workflows, macros. They can also develop analytical apps. I'll also talk about what are apps in the upcoming slides. So they can do this and share with other users throughout your organization. Uh, Altris server also has a built-in version control, which provides the tracking. Uh, you could do rollback changes, et cetera. So you can also embed these workflows or processes directly into your internal applications and explore, expose these reusable analytics to business users across the enterprise. And you can do this using Alteryx SDKs or Alteryx APIs. Finally, the server also provides detailed usage reporting, auditing, and standardized logging, coupled with authentication and encryption protocols, making sure your data remains safe and secure. So here are the minimum requirements for Alteryx server. Uh, in case you're wondering, uh, I mentioned this previously, you can host your Alteryx server on-prem or even on cloud. The same specs would be applicable in both the cases. Uh, I'll pause here for a quick second if anybody wants to grab a screenshot. And today I plan to focus more on the front end element of the server, which we call the Alteryx gallery. And later on, I'll move on to the server architecture and the service layer and shed some light on how server works from a backend perspective. All right, uh, some of you might be familiar with what you're seeing on the screen. This is nothing but the Alteryx gallery. This is the web component. And the Alteryx Gallery is a cloud or self-hosted application for publishing, sharing, and executing workflows. Alteryx itself offers a public version of the gallery, which you can access at gallery.alteryx.com. Think of this as the Tableau public for Alteryx. So the Alteryx server deployment allows the companies to have an ability to offer a private gallery to their internal users hosted on their internal infrastructure. So as you can see, the demo today is for a private gallery hosted for Lovelytics by Lovelytics. By default, a private gallery will be configured to run on a single server, but just as an FII, it can also be con configured across multiple servers. All right, um, so this is the uh, gallery interface. You have the menu bar up top. You can join or sign into the gallery using the inbuilt authentication. 
you can view the user profiles. Similarly, you can also view the gallery admin section and you have a couple of help links over here. You have the search bar, you can search for workflows, you can search for districts. And finally, you have the navigation panel. This has the quick limbs for districts, private studio, collection, workflow results, media, so on. And finally, you have your content area, which is the screen over here, where we execute workflows, view results, and check other fun stuff. So, your Alteryx creators can choose to share their workflows in the public gallery. Uh, this homepage here is called as the public gallery. So any user with access to your internal gallery URL, as soon as they log in, they'll come to this public gallery section. External users cannot view or run uh, workflows in the public gallery unless they have been invited by an admin and they should also have network rights to access the gallery website. Next, we move on to district. The district app is for content management. Here you can see different districts for different departments. Uh, when I click into any of the districts, I'm then presented with different business solution or automation processes that my internal developers might have built for the organization. Each solution that you see here or the business process that you see here is nothing but an analytical application. Uh, I'll talk about apps once I'm done with the uh, entire interface. Next, we move on to the private studio. A user will receive their private studio to which if they are designated as an artisan user. Artisan is a role uh, that is assigned on the Alters Gallery. They may publish workflows from their desktop design. To see these contents created by other artisans, a workflow should be shared to the public gallery. The public gallery is nothing but what you see on your home screen, whereas a private studio is nothing but it's private. So whenever you publish your workflows to the Altex gallery slash server, all of them are seen in the private studio or all of them are sitting in the private studio. If you choose to share them publicly, you just turn on this um, toggle which says public workflow. Next, we move on to connection, collections. Insights, uh, it's a feature wherein when you work on workflows or generate some reports that uh, you can publish all your insights to the staff. I don't happen to have any insights to show you, so I'm quickly moving on to collections. Uh, you can read more about insights in the Alteryx server documentation. So collections, collections are mean for means for ensuring only specific users may have access to workflows, which they are assigned to. Um, collections may be of, uh, organized in several ways, that is by function, maybe that is by creator, consumer, security level, et cetera. It is up to you or your admin to decide how you want to categorize your collection. Um, but one important note here is that collections are managed by users and not by the gallery admin. You can tell the admin to organize a collection in a certain way, but it is on the user or the artisan who can then uh, decide how this collection is supposed to work. So collections are tied to only one user's private studio, meaning we cannot share workflows from multiple different private studios. Uh, a user must have their private studio or a member of another private studio to run workflows shared via a collection. So we have one more tab, which we are calling as the workflow results. So here you can see all your workflow results, which is the lightning uh, accounts that, you know, there is an error or this particular workflow has failed to run. And all the check marks tell you that, you know, like the workflows have been successfully executed. 
finally, here you will see all the different workflow schedules. Um, I don't have any workflow schedules because I don't have the need for refreshing any of my workflows on a daily basis because this is my demo environment. But in the schedule tab, you can go edit your schedules, you can change the time zones, you can have them repeated on regular days, bi-weekly, once every X number of hours and so on. They're presented with different options that you're able to change and play around with. So let's go into one of the districts and execute a workflow to see what that looks like. So here is a um, analytical application that I'm running, which predicts me, which predicts and gives me, you know, like who are the high school students that are going to take an admission in my school for that semester. So I'm selecting an application and I'm running this workflow. While this runs, let's quickly um, look at different roles available for the gallery. Um, so you have the admin user whom we are also calling as the curator. He, the curator has the highest level of access across the gallery. And then next we have the artisan who can publish, run and share workflows in their studio. And then member, he can run workflows in his studio. Finally, viewer, he can run work workflows in the public gallery, but he cannot do anything beyond that. So here are some sharing capabilities, differences between uh, artisans, members, and viewers. I've not included curative here because he is beyond all, he can do anything that he wants. And finally, it is a quick role comparison. So the artisans, like we discussed, he can create workflows, share workflows. Uh, he can run workflows in the studio, collection, or even my company's gallery. Member can only run workflows, collections, and the viewer finally, he can only run workflows in my company's public gallery. When you say my company's gallery, it does nothing but the public gallery. And so now that this analytical application has executed, the end users in the organization don't have to understand the inner workings of the workflow meaning they're completely blind to what the workflow is doing, but they can consume the solution that is working off the app that one of the developers might have built. So I'll show you, uh, I'll talk a little bit about um, apps later, but let's quickly move on to the admin view. So again, uh, I have an admin section over here. Um, I can click on that. And I'm presented with what we are calling as the admin dashboard. So as you can imagine, admin is responsible for managing users, workflows, automation schedules, different frameworks, et cetera. Also an artisan can be promoted to an admin provided he needs some criteria, which is uh, he needs to be aware of all the different, uh, he needs to be aware of um, workers, how a controller works, how a worker in the uh, server architecture works. He needs to understand how to schedule, what to schedule and when to schedule. He needs to be aware of what is the server load, differences between districts, collections, and studios. Once you think anybody internally or one of your artisan users is familiar, then yes, uh, you can assign one of the artisans and from one of the department as a curator. A quick configuration panel, I won't be going over this, but subscription, like we discussed, subscription is another name for a studio. And Studios generally allows Alteryx designer users to publish and share workflows privately within their organization. Uh, remember, you cannot share anything from a private studio with a different user. The only way for you to share is to put it in a um, put it in your public gallery. Whereas, if you create a studio, then you can privately share your workflows. So each user that 
creates a gallery account, uh, is automatically given their subscription, which can become a private studio if the user is an artisan. And when a user creates a workflow in the designer and publishes it to the gallery, the workflow is added to the user's private studio. This is all uh, Alteryx admin jargon. So I won't focus too much on this. Let's move on. And then users tab, as you can imagine, um, this is for user management. And as you can see, you can have, you can change the different roles over here. Uh, this being the demo environment, I only have myself and Mike on here. Workflows here is where as an admin, you can manage all your workflows. Um, this is where you start creating tabs, tags, which you assign to districts. Uh, please note that districts cannot be created without having tags. So this is where tag creation happens. You can have, you can also control uh, the access for different workflows. Also, there are different run modes that you can um, assign to each of these uh, workflows and apps. Uh, I don't think I want to focus too much time on that, so I'll directly jump into data connections. I can, I can talk more about these run modes during the Q&A uh, time period. All right, data connections. As an admin, I can add data connection strings to the gallery and share them with specific users or all members of a studio. A connection string that you're seeing here may contain specific credentials to which access needs to be granted to the users without actually providing them the connection string. So for gallery connections to work, uh, both the Alteryx server machine and the Alteryx designer machine will need appropriate divers installed. So data connections is when, you know, like when you have a connection that you add your gallery, then users can directly log in to a designer and just use this gallery connection instead of dealing with creating their own connection strings and then bringing them to designer and so on. Jobs again, uh, as an admin, uh, you can determine whether users allow, uh, which users are allowed to schedule workflows through the gallery interface. Uh, the admin will be able to view all the scheduled workflows here, including who is the owner, what could be the frequency of each of these workflows. And also as an admin, you can um, schedule jobs or edit or delete jobs if needed. So I skipped over districts, but districts, um, like we discussed, it gives you the ability to group or categorize the workflows that you share in the public gallery. Uh, as an admin, you can create districts for your users. So think of them as collections, but for public gallery. Um, you can also create new districts, modify them, change the description, image, if you have any performance. If your organization plans is an icon, you can change that. Like we discussed, uh, you need to create tags though in advance um, and then assign my tags to the districts. Again, you can on or off the districts as well. So before I move on to the app, oh, getting ahead of myself. So here is where you can see uh, your entire schedule forecast. What times you have different schedules, what time you know, if you want, you can, you know, look at the calendar and see where you might have a downtime or overhead or where might the server be overloaded just by looking at the schedule. Media tab, uh, you can add any banners here. You can change the logos or you can change the theme, customize it to how you like. As you can see, I've added the logo here. Um, I've added the, um, our Lovelotex color palette is here. And then finally, as an admin, you can have different notifications sent out to the entire organization. The notification panel is where you um, edit or modify or add more notifications. But here are Alteryx generally gives you some temp templates that you can modify and send out notifications to your users. And anybody, for those of you who are wondering what a banner is, banner is something that you are seeing here that you might want to um, show all the users in your organization. This could be downtime schedules or if there is any maintenance, that you, then you can just have a banner displayed here. 
All right. Um, so I've been talking about apps for quite a while now. You've also seen what the functionality of an app looks like, but what is an app generally? So app is nothing but a designer workflow which has a user interface that is sitting on top of it. So you have uh, analytical tools that let you build this interface with an Alteryx, which you then publish to your analytical or Alteryx gallery. So a workflow is an app when the file extension is YXWZ. It has a user interface and the user can execute a workflow using their own parameters without building anything. So in this case, a developer builds the workflow for his manager, manager goes onto the server, just executes the app, consumes the results, and just moves on with his day. And in your workflow configuration, if you pay close attention, as soon as you drag the interface tools onto the canvas, uh, in the configuration, you should see it converting to an analytical application. So who can use your app? So any user with access to designer can use your app, obviously because you are the user who's building the app and the designer. Any user with access to the gallery, viewers, artisans, curators, all of these people can run the apps. Artisans and curators can also publish apps to the gallery. And if you're wondering how, you can just share them. Just like you've seen, today I've been showing you different apps and the process is similar to how you publish or save something to the Alteryx server. All right, uh, I'll just quickly pause here for a second and see if there are any questions. All right, so we are now moving on to the final part of the webinar. Uh, before I move on, the intent so far has been that, you know, to educate users, you could be someone who wants to invest in server or you purchase server and you want to understand the different components, then today's webinar should have you well prepared for it. Admin panel, uh, it's all for all, it is for all the admins on the call today, but everything else, uh, it should be pretty useful in helping you navigate the Alteryx gallery. Right, so moving on to the final part of the webinar, uh, depending on your vertical, you might find this boring or very interesting. I will now discuss the server architecture and different components that are working together in the back end. So uh, let's talk about Alteryx engine for a second. Uh, Alteryx engine is this uh, that you're seeing on the screen right now. It's an executable file. That is deployed with um, designer server. So the engine is the heart of all tricks. It lives in both designer and the server. The engine is responsible for executing the workflows that are built in all tricks designer. It also provides high speed data processing and analytics functionality and it produces the output. The engine also supports direct connections to various data sources for accessing the data and then it processes it in memory during execution of the workflow. So this engine can be entirely self-contained in Alteryx designer. It can be deployed on the Alteryx server or it can also be deployed in cloud via the Alteryx analytics gallery. During the installation, you are presented with a couple of options, which lets you understand that, you know, you are configuring uh, the Alteryx engine either to gallery or the server. Now, coming back to this uh, architecture for a quick second, everything under this blue bar that you're seeing here is called as the service layer. The service layer facilitates the communication between the front end and the back end. Or said another way, um, it facilitates the communication for everything above the blue line and everything below the blue line. So this service layer allows the Alteryx engine to be deployed across multiple servers 
providing a highly scalable architecture for scheduling management and execution of all the workloads. Uh, the service layer uses a controller worker architecture where one server acts as a controller and manages the job queue and other acts as a worker to perform the work. The service also relies upon the persistence tier to store information critical to the functioning of the service and also serves uh, content and information to the gallery when it requests it. All right, if we drive deeper into the service layer, we have three components. We have the controller, worker, and the database. So the controller uh, found here in the center of the service layer is responsible for management of service settings and delegation of work to the Alteryx service workers. In short, the controller delegates all the work and communicates between different components. Whereas the worker, it does all the heavy lifting. The worker initiates the Alteryx engine and is responsible for executing the workloads. There can be different workers and the server architecture and the actual number of workers needed will depend upon the required performance. And also there is one Alteryx engine present for every one worker that you choose to purchase on. Finally, we have the database. Uh, Alteryx server includes the persistence layer that is used to store information critical to the functioning of the service, such as application files, um, job queues. Uh, it could also be some of the workflow results. It could be logs, so on and so forth. And the service layer supports two different mechanisms for persistence. Uh, we either provide SQLite or MongoDB as the databases. For anything lightweight or even for local deployments, most people use SQLite, but for scheduling, for scheduling needs or for any heavier usage, Alteryx uh, Gallery is deployed with MongoDB. So to wrap it up, uh, let's quickly understand how all of these different components work together. And the next few slides will hopefully give you a click, clear picture on how the Alteryx server works. Uh, one last component that I forgot to mention is the scheduler. It's not really an architectural component, but this is the scheduling UI that you see in Designer. Uh, when we publish something, jobs are sent from Designer to Server, and all these jobs, once you start publishing, they're added to the worker job queue at their scheduled time. How does the worker job queue look like? You'll see that in a quick animation. But yeah. So here is how the service layer behaves. So generally a worker asks a work and it asks the controller if there is any work for it to do. The controller checks with the persistent layer or the database to see if there are any jobs lined up or queued up. In this case, there are no queued jobs. So imagine a set, uh, use case where a job from the scheduler or gallery is requested. The controller queues the job. So when I say a job from the scheduler is requested, you as an user is, are publishing the workflow to the server. That workflow is nothing but a job that is scheduled on the server. Next, same thing happens. The worker asks for the job. The controller checks to see if there are jobs queued up. In this case, we have a queued up job. The worker then executes that job and sends out the result to the database. This result is then presented to you, the end user. So how does this all look like in a single machine environment? So now let's see the interaction between the front end and the back end and how the service layer is communicating and trying everything together. First, from the gallery, you've just published your workflow. That has now moved on to the service layer. And then the controller queues this job in the database for it to run. 
the job is then executed using the worker and the results are again stored in the database. The gallery now communicates with the controller to see if the job is done. Controller checks if it is done, the results are passed back onto the gallery. So previously when I ran the analytical application, this was the process that was taking place. As soon as I hit run in the gallery, gallery was communicating with the controller. Controller was then checking, you know, if there is anything queued up in the database. If there was nothing queued up, it immediately executes this job and the worker executes this job, sends it back to the controller and controller sends it back to the gallery. We'll be passing on this deck. I have a cool animation where you can read everything. Everything is neatly labeled. So you can understand the entire server architecture and how the communication is taking place. With that, call to action. Uh, if you are someone who's looking to get started with Alltrack server, then definitely uh, download the designer trial and server trial and reach out to Mike and we can help you get started. With that, uh, we'll now open up for questions. Thanks, Omar. That was great. And yeah, I think we moved through that a little bit faster than we expected. So we have some more time for uh, Q&A. Um, just from kind of a question asking standpoint, if you could use like the question and ask, and, uh, excuse me, question and answer Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen, that would be very helpful just for us to, to manage uh, Q&A. And I will say too, we will be sharing the recording after today's session. I think Ron has a question. I see a raised hand. Uh... Ron, do you mind using the, the Q&A box to ask? We got one question that just came in for you, Amr. Question is, I would like to know if there's any way, oh man, we're getting a couple questions, great. All right, so first one, I would like to know if there's any way to update the data real time, such as like, hey, we're using an ODBC or, or something else. Absolutely, I mean, when you say real time, right? Uh, Everything when using Alteric Server is relying on the uh, refresh schedules. So generally what most of our clients do is they have hourly schedules where the data is refreshed. I think you can go as low as every 15 minutes, but uh, just make sure that you know uh, there are not a lot of workflows which are updating or refreshing every 15 minutes. Again, it comes down to the tier and the infrastructure that you're purchasing, but yes, uh, the real-time experience is through workflow schedules that are created every 10 minutes or 15 minutes. If you're using a Tableau dashboard, then every 15 minutes, you can refresh your Qualtrics datasets, or you can directly publish the dataset to Tableau server. In that way, if you're refreshing your uh, dashboard every 15 minutes, then that's the near real-time experience. So we've got one, all right, this is, and, um... If we need to follow up on that question, just please feel free to put something back into the, um, we'll, we'll come back. I guess the, the follow-up question is, can you explain how to do it? I don't exactly understand. Um, Amr, do you think we should set up time for that one, a separate time? Or do you, do you think you can talk through it at a high level quickly? Yeah, I mean, I've not, uh, unfortunately today we didn't show any of the scheduling, uh, how scheduling looks like, right? So maybe, uh, Kim, if you can reach out to us, uh, I can, I'm happy to have a call with you and I can show you what scheduling looks like. It's just going to be a 15 minute schedule where the workflow is continuously or every 15 minutes refreshing the data set. And then whichever application is feeding off this data set is then applicated, uh, then refreshed every or updated every 15 minutes. All right, next question. How do you enable version history on Alteryx server? 
So one other question from Ron. Uh, from Ron, I have a question that says, what version of Alteryx server? Uh, I believe this is 2020.1, but I've also seen it in 2019.1 and above. So yeah, like whenever you update uh, to the next version, I think you should see the... Let me also check the documentation and hit you an email, Ron. Uh, yeah, I'm not too confident, I think. I want to say it was available from 2018, but I'm leaning towards 2019.1. Megan is asking if there are any machine learning items on Alteryx server, or does that require a separate license? Uh, yes and no. If you're doing any of your predictive, if you're using predictive tools, then server supports all the predictive tools. But if you're doing anything intelligent suit, uh, when you say machine learning, you have to purchase the uh, intelligent suit add-on for machine learning. We have some computer vision tools, but for neural networks and I think below, uh, they're all supported on the server. So when scheduling jobs, instead of picking a specific date time, can you specify that workflow two is run after completion of workflow one, for example? Uh, I don't know if you're leaning on to the chained apps concept, but from a purely scheduling perspective, you can give priorities to your workflows. Uh, depending on the priority, you can set priorities to certain workflows. So depending on that priority, the server picks up those particular workflows. But if you want to execute a workflow two right after workflow one, that's a chained app concept. Uh, you can do that but you'll have to build a chain app first and then publish it. Any special considerations of Alteryx server is on AWS when setting up? Uh, not really. I mean, uh, the server documentation gives you all the details, um, all the specs. They can be similar to when doing it on AWS, but obviously you'll have to consider, uh, um, you know, like if you're hosting, what is the storage and area of details, but from the Alteryx side, nothing really. So version history, you don't have to enable it. That's enabled by default. Um, so this is where you're able to see for each of your apps, Let's go to home and let's see if I have anything with Yeah, I cleaned up most of our apps, but you know, as you can see, this is the version history. You can see your different iterations that you have here. Um, you can select any of the iteration and make it the final published version or you can also select different iterations and then uh, run those selected versions. You can also download, obviously, any of those uh, iterations. Zarun, no. Um, so basically, Alteryx server is unlimited users. So it is upon the organization, but let's say that you uh, purchase a very basic configuration, it is still accessible and available to all the users in your organization. The admin then decides who is supposed to be made a uh, artisan, viewer, et cetera, but no, they don't take up a license. For server, it's a single license. You don't have to purchase any seats. That is the Alteryx hub. But where our server is concerned, it's unlimited users provided the specification or the configuration of the server supports 100, 500, or 1,000 users. The controller, now it is just think of the controller as a mediator, or I would like to say this, that it controls everything, but doesn't really do anything. The worker whole and solely does the job. Like it is the, um, heavy lifter in the Alteryx configuration. So usually in a multi-node environment, you have multiple different workers and you can also choose, you can have a worker on a basic configuration and you can have a different worker on a higher configuration. 
and you can also choose which jobs should be executed by the higher spec worker versus which job should be uh, executed by the lower spec worker. But worker, he does everything in the architecture. What is the difference between AMP and normal engine? Um, AMP is, it's the revamped and reprocessed. So it's a new engine that also is pushing. Uh, previously, uh, a normal engine, it uses your system's memory to execute a few workflows. Whereas AMP now uses the uh, server resources to execute a work few workflows differently. And previously you didn't have multi-threaded execution, whereas the AMP uh, enables the multi-threaded execution, whereas wherein the entire data within the workflow is broken down into different packets and these packets are executed simultaneously. So when you're working with a data set of 10 gigs, that's broken down into two gigs of uh, five different data sets of two gigs each and all of them are multi-threaded or executed simultaneously. Yes, it does. You can uh, purchase workers separately and you can keep adding them on to your server configuration. And uh, in the configuration, you just do that by, um, in the installation window, you just have an option where you can just install a new worker. Let me check on that. I don't think you need a separate license, but you get a key to enable the new worker. I don't remember that. Uh, so what? I'll have to check the documentation. But you can definitely enable more workers. Yeah, the more the workers, the more keys you get, and you can keep adding on your workers. All right. Oh, wow. That was uh, quite a few. Questions, Mike? Which we yeah, didn't I expect. think that's a record for, for our questions. And honestly, really appreciate that. Sometimes it's it's tough to know how you did if nobody asked any questions at the end. So I appreciate that. Um, and if you have any follow-up questions, you know, you have a something that comes up 20 minutes from now or later today or later this week, don't hesitate to reach us. I'm gonna, you know, send a follow-up email with the resources covered today and a link to the recording in case you want to refer back to it. So Use that as an opportunity to you know, open up a conversation with us. If you have any questions, if you're you know, looking for services, help, assistance, um, of course, anything related to Alteryx. And other than that, we'll give you a few minutes back here. Really appreciate your time, um, you know, wherever you're, you're dialing in from. So thanks so much for sticking on with us. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks, everyone. I hope you find this useful. Have a nice day. Take care.